Good morning. This is Hans H. Stein. I'm a professor of animal nutrition at the University of Illinois. I'd like to talk to you today about the nutritional value of animal proteins fed to pigs. A few take-home messages from this presentation are the following. First, I want to talk a little bit about the ash concentration in animal proteins, and I hope to make the point that the ash concentration in animal proteins is important for determining the nutritional value. So therefore, we need to focus on ash every time we talk about animal proteins. I also want to talk a little bit about fish meal, and I want to show some data that indicate that the quality of fish meal may be reduced compared to what we have known in the past. However, there are several alternative feed ingredients that we can use instead of fish meal, and I'll talk a little bit about these ingredients. I also want to talk about byproducts from the poultry industry that may be used in diets for pigs, and these byproducts include feather meal, chicken meal, and poultry byproduct meal. And finally, I'll talk a little bit about intestinal byproducts that are available for use in the swine industry, and we have a few data on these products as well. The presentation is a short summary of a paper that was presented at the Midwestern Swine Nutrition Meeting earlier this fall, and you can find the full paper with all the references at the following web address. First, I'll talk a little bit about ash. As mentioned, ash is an important nutrient in animal proteins. And to illustrate this, we have here two different sources of whey permeate. Permeate 1 contains 8.96% ash, and permeate 2 contains only 1.72% ash. And as you can tell, the influence of ash on the concentration of metabolizable energy is quite significant because we have only 3,081 kilocalories metabolizable energy per kilogram dry matter in the high ash permeate, whereas the concentration of metabolizable energy is 3,593 kilocalories per kilogram dry matter in the low ash permeate. So clearly we see that the more ash we have in a feed ingredient, the less energy we have in that ingredient. And this is not surprising because ash is one of the nutrients in ingredients that does not contribute energy to the diet. So for this reason, we need to know the concentration of energy in our feed ingredients. Looking at some data from meat and bone meal, we can see that the concentration of crude protein, acid hydrolyzed ether extract, which is also called fat, in ash is on average 51.9% crude protein, 13.1% fat, and 27.3% ash. And we can see there's some variation among the sources with the lowest and the greatest concentration. But in particular, we'll see that ash varies from 206 up to 33.2%. We can also see that the variability expressed as a coefficient of variance is greater for ash than it is for crude protein and fat. If we look at calcium and phosphorus, we'll see that in the sources of meat and bone meal where we have a high concentration of ash, we also tend to have a high concentration of calcium and of phosphorus. And therefore, it is possible to predict the concentration of both calcium and phosphorus from the concentration of ash if we use one of the two equations shown here. So if we work with meat and bone meal, all we really have to do is to analyze the source of meat and bone meal we use for ash, and then we can predict the concentration of calcium by multiplying the ash by 0.456 and subtracting 4.015. And in the same way, we can predict the concentration of phosphorus from the concentration of ash by multiplying the concentration of ash by 0.2044 and subtracting 1.424. So again, we see here that ash is an important nutrient that can be used to predict the nutritional value of a feed ingredient. We can also predict the digestibility of both phosphorus and calcium in meat and bone meal by knowing the concentration of ash and the concentration of calcium. As we can see here, the standardized total tract digestibility of phosphorus in percentage in meat and bone meal equals 66.345 plus 4.225 times 
the concentration of ash, and then we have to subtract 13.126 times the concentration of calcium. If we use this equation, then we can relatively accurately predict the digestibility of phosphorus in meat and bone meal. Likewise, we can also predict the apparent total tract digestibility of calcium in meat and bone meal by adding 67.316 to 3.833 times the concentration of ash and subtracting 12.398 times the concentration of calcium. So once again, we see that concentration of ash is important for predicting the concentration of digestible nutrients in meat and bone meal. If we look at fish meal, we'll see that the concentration of ash in fish meal has increased over the years. And here are some sources of fish meal that we have used in research at the University of Illinois over the last three years. If only whole fish is included in the fish meal, the concentration of ash would be no more than 15%. However, we can see that in most sources of fish meal, the concentration of ash is between 18 and 20 percent, and sometimes even above 20 percent. And the reason we get greater concentrations of ash in fish meal is that sometimes offal from the fish fillet industry is included in the fish meal, and this offal contains greater concentrations of bones from fish, and therefore we get more fish bones into the fish meal and as a result the concentration of ash is increased. So again by analyzing the concentration of ash in fish meal we can predict the nutritional value of fish meal. The importance of ash on the energy concentration in fish meal is illustrated on this slide where we have the concentration of metabolizable energy in kilocalories per kilogram on average, according to NRC published in 2012, the energy concentration in fish meal is 3,606 kilocalories metabolizable energy per kilogram. However, in recent sources of fish meal used at the University of Illinois, the concentration of energy is only 3,472. And remember, the sources of fish meal we have been able to obtain at the University of Illinois during recent years has greater concentration of ash compared with what has previously been used. And that is likely the main reason why we observe a reduced concentration of energy in these sources. Fish meal is often included in diets fed to pigs to provide digestible amino acids, and the digestibility of amino acids have not changed over time, and we still have relatively high concentration of amino acids in fish meal and relatively high digestibility of amino acids. So from that perspective, fish meal is still a high quality product. However, the increased concentration of ash reduces the energy concentration in fish meal as we saw on the previous slide. As the quality of fish meal has reduced, we have seen more alternative protein sources being included in diets fed to weanling pigs. And among those sources are some of the byproducts that we obtain from the poultry industry. Two of the byproducts from the poultry industry include chicken meal and poultry byproduct meal. Chicken meal is produced from the whole carcasses of poultry and may include poultry with the bones or without the bones. Poultry byproduct meal, on the other hand, contains the offal of carcasses of slaughtered poultry and feet, necks, undeveloped eggs and intestines may be included in this meal. And in the table here, we can see the concentration of nutrients in both chicken meal and poultry byproduct meal. We have approximately 66% crude protein, 14.2% ash, 11% fat, and 3,694 kilocalories metabolizable energy in chicken meal, whereas poultry byproduct meal contains 62.3% crude protein, 11.3% ash, 14.3% fat, and 4,348 kilocalories metabolizable energy per kilogram. And the reason we have more energy in poultry byproduct meal than in chicken meal is that the concentration of fat is a little bit greater than in chicken meal, and the concentration of ash is a little bit less in poultry byproduct meal compared with chicken meal. 
So that results in an increase in the metabolizable energy in the product. Both of these products can be included in diets fed to weanling pigs as replacements for fish meal and without any change in animal performance. A new product on the market is called AVE Digest. An AVE Digest contains enzymatically hydrolyzed spent laying hens from the laying industry. An extruded egg albumin is also included in the product, which is then mixed with high-protein soybean meal. The concentration of crude protein in this product is 49.5%. There's 14.6% ash, 15.8% fat, and the energy concentration is 3,235 kilocalories of metabolizable energy per kilogram. AVE Digest is relatively new in the marketplace, but is also used as a replacement for fish meal in diets fed to weaning pigs. As mentioned, both chicken meal and poultry byproduct meal and AVE Digest can be used as replacements for fish meal in diets fed to weaning pigs. However, the digestibility of amino acids in chicken meal is less than in fish meal, and specifically, the digestibility of lysine is sometimes reduced, and the main reason for this reduced digestibility of lysine is that sometimes chicken meal is heat damaged because of overheating during processing. So it is important that the digestibility of lysine and other amino acids is known before diets are formulated to pigs. One of the other co-products from the poultry industry that we may use in diets fed to pigs is feather meal, and feather meal can either be mixed with blood before it is produced, or it can be used without inclusion of blood. Most feather meals on the market are hydrolyzed by steam before they are used. The digestibility of amino acids in feather meal is also relatively low, and again, as we saw for chicken meal, we can see here that the digestibility of lysine is very low. And as was the case for chicken meal, the main reason for this low digestibility of lysine is that this particular source of feather meal likely was heat damaged during processing. So again, it is important that we use feed ingredients that have not been heat damaged. And in particular, when we use feather meal, it is important that we know the digestibility of lysine to not overvalue the product. We also have intestinal byproducts available for the swine industry, and there are several new products on the market. Among those products, we have a product called Porcel or DPS50 RD, and this product contains enzymatically hydrolyzed intestines that are collected after heparin has been produced from pig intestines. There are two other products called PEP2 Plus and PEP50, and both of these products also contain porcine intestines, and specifically the mucosa from porcine intestines. And this mucosa is then mixed with dried fermentation biomass and a product called HP300, which is enzymatically hydrolyzed soybean meal to produce PEP2 Plus or the mucosa is simply mixed with high-protein soybean meal to produce PEP50. All of these products are available to the swine industry, and they are used as alternatives to fish meal in diets fed to weaning pigs. We don't have a lot of comparative data on these three products, but for Porcel, there has been several experiments published, and in a review a few years back, it was shown that in most experiments, results obtained for porcel are close to what is being obtained for protein plasma in terms of improvements in average daily gain if this product is included in diets fed to weaning pigs. So based on this review, it appears that porcel is a very good feed ingredient for weaning pigs. The energy concentration in PEP2 Plus and PEP50 was recently determined, and we can see that both of these ingredients have a high concentration of metabolizable energy. PEP2 Plus contains 4,291 kilocalories per kilogram, and PEP50 contains 4,122 kilocalories per kilogram. So both of these ingredients have a relatively high concentration of energy, and that makes them attractive in diets fed to weaning pigs. 
So to conclude on intestinal byproducts, it appears that these products are valuable ingredients in diets fed to weaning pigs. They may substitute fish meal and possibly blood products in the diets. One drawback of these products is that they don't smell very good. However, that does not appear to have any negative effects on feed intake of the pigs. So the bad smell is only an issue for the people working with these products and appears not to be of any disadvantage for the pigs. We also have blood products available and we can use many different types of blood products in diets fed to pigs. Concentration of crude protein in all types of blood products is relatively high. We can see here both avian, porcine, and bovine blood products. We have more than 80% crude protein. Protein plasma is a little bit less in crude protein at about 70%, but if we use blood cells or blood meal that is spray dried, we are again above 80% crude protein. All of these sources of blood meal have high concentrations of amino acids and the protein has a high quality when fed to pigs. The digestibility of lysine, however, does differ among products. The avian and porcine blood meal used in this experiment were ring dried or drum dried and the digestibility of lysine therefore was less than in the other products. All the other products were spray dried and therefore the digestibility is greater in these products compared with the ring dried avian and porcine blood meal. In particular in blood cells and spray dried blood meal we have digestibility of lysine that is close to 90%. The digestibility of phosphorus is also very high in all sources of blood meal. You can see here the avian blood meal and the porcine blood meal have phosphorus digestibility that is greater than 80% and spray dried plasma protein has a digestibility of phosphorus that is very close to 100%. So inclusion of blood meal or blood plasma or blood cells in diets fed to weaning pigs will increase the addition of digestible phosphorus and we have very high digestibility of this phosphorus. So with this, I'd like to thank you for your attention. I hope this brief overview over use of animal proteins in diets fed to pigs has been helpful. I do want to remind you that we have more information on animal proteins in the conference proceedings paper that is published on our website. We also have much information on other subjects on our website and the address of the website is nutrition.ansi.illinois.edu.